If you're looking for locally adapted bees to populate a new hive, or just the most economical option for obtaining bees, joining a swarm list like beeallies.com and catching your own will be the best way to go. To learn more about what a swarm is and why we love populating our hives with them, please check out our How to Get Bees video. First and foremost, you'll wanna make sure you have all of the essential equipment ready to go at a moment's notice. When swarm season hits, we're rarely without gear in our vehicles. With the rise in popularity of beekeeping, swarm catching has become somewhat competitive. Fast responders will have the most success in this venture. Our essential swarm catching toolkits include a breathable wooden or cardboard box or nuke, a light colored bed sheet or tarp, a bee brush, pruning shears, lemongrass oil, protective gear, and if possible, a ladder or stool. When you first arrive at the site, determine whether it's safe to get the bees. If the cluster is within arm's reach of ground level, don't hesitate. If the cluster is positioned high up, use your best judgment to determine if you're able to safely catch the bees in the box and come back down the ladder. The allure of free bees can easily influence you to push your limits. There are other swarms out there and none are worth risking your life for. Once you've donned your protective gear, lay a sheet out under the swarm and place your box on top of it. Move as much of the swarm into the box as you can. If the queen did not make it in, you will know within minutes. The workers will be drawn to the queen's pheromone and will move out of the box and back around her. If this is the case, wait until the majority of them cluster once more, then try again until they stay put. If the cluster is on a branch, shake the bees into a box. If the cluster is hanging from small branches or vegetation, you can use pruning shears to clip it off and then place that in the box with the rest of the bees. This tends to be a lot more gentle, but you will have to make sure you remove all of that vegetation from the full hive, the permanent hive, once you install them. If the cluster is on a fence, wall, mailbox, or other similar structure, you may want to lightly mist them with water. This makes it harder for them to fly. Brush them into the box with a quick downward motion. Try not to break up the cluster as much as possible. If the cluster is on the ground, place lemongrass oil in the box as a lure and tilt the box sideways to encourage them to move there on their own. You can even use a branch or plant to build a little bee bridge from the ground and into the box. Once most of the swarm is in the container, close the box, leaving a small gap for stragglers and returning scout bees to enter through. Leave the box in this position until sundown. Scout bees will be out looking for a new hive location until the end of the day. You do not want to leave confused stragglers and returning scout bees behind. That may upset the property owners. As a swarm catcher, you are the honeybee liaison to your community, so be as courteous as possible. After nightfall, close up the box, secure it with tape entirely, or put the whole box in a mesh swarm bag. Transport the swarm as gently as possible and place them in a safe location overnight. Be sure they have an opening for air and to start coming and going as soon as the sun rises. If you captured your swarm box in a nuke box, simply staple screen over the opening before transport or use a mesh swarm bag. Remember to remove both once you have your nuke settled in your yard. Allow your bees to begin utilizing the nuke and building comb for a few days. Then transfer the comb into their permanent hive. If you captured the swarm in a box or enclosure without frames or top bars, you will want to install them in your hive the following morning. To do this, simply shake the bees into the hive. Then move the frames or top bars back in place. Close up the hive and prop the swarm catching box or enclosure near the entrance of the hive to allow stragglers to find their way in. Some beekeepers are lucky enough to bait and trap swarms. When scout bees find a suitable nesting site, they return to the swarm cluster and then direct the rest of their sisters and their queen to the new site with the waggle dance. Once the swarm reaches their destination, worker bees gather at the entrance and fan their Nazanov glands. 
This releases scout pheromone to direct the rest of the bees into the new hive. This pheromone resembles the scent of lemongrass oil, and beekeepers can use small amounts of the oil in their hives or in traps to lure in a swarm. The best swarm traps are at least six feet off the ground. Traps can be a range of enclosures from nuke boxes mounted in trees to compostable flower pots mounted on plywood on house sides. All it is is a biodegradable flower pot on some plywood screwed to the side of my shed with a few drops of lemongrass oil inside. Once you notice bees moving into your trap, you can close it up, take it down, and then either transfer comb or transfer your bees into a hive. Swarms are our favorite method of populating hives, though it's important to keep in mind that it's not a guaranteed source of bees. If you don't want to take any chances for getting bees this spring, purchase or reserve a bee package for any hive style or a nuke for Langstroth hives. For more information about purchasing bees, check out our How to Get Bees video. Catching swarms is a great way to expand your hobby while doing your part to propagate strong genetics in your local honeybee population.